this is Swade's Pokemon Path. Highlights. Right off the bat, we have some serious arc potential as Ava's blogging now with viewers and everything. Uh, don't tell me our champ in the making is camera shy. Oh, sweet. Is she going to get a swelled head and discover the pitfalls of parasocial relationships? Okay, yeah, probably not, but I will say this is a pretty efficient way to incorporate a time skip. And even though I wasn't a fan of the execution of it last episode, it does feel really nice when former rivals become Rido Di- 135 WHAT?! I mean, I get that numbers are higher these days now that more people are online and shorts and TikTok allow for higher view counts, but one, that's not a TikTok or shorts video format, and two, over a hundred million in two weeks! The past few weeks have been crazy. Like, a rookie beating regionals with a basic deck is pretty cool, but for comparison, the actual 2023 World's Final has been up for four weeks at time of writing and has 47,000 views. Path to the Peak might not be Yu-Gi-Oh yet, but with the world rocketing towards one game obsession, it's not far off. But yeah, she's continuing her reign of plant-based terror around school, including beating over six people simultaneously? She beat everybody all at once! How does that even work? Does she have six separate identical decks? Though this does conjure up the idea of a Pokemon version of Magic the Gathering's archenemy format. Like have four players gang up on one with a deliberately overpowered deck? You could call it raid battles, it fits. But anyway, after a nice bit of background character work where we find out Celestine has a skincare regimen... I can't believe you posted that. Good show, just because you have grunge as an aesthetic doesn't mean you have to have it as a lifestyle. We're off to the internationals. I like how quickly we're moving so far. Dare I dream that we might get time for some strategies in this one? First though... Okay, Ava's dad is a closeted old school poke freak, fully confirmed. You could argue he was just casually into the games and just being supportive before, but having the second dub opening to the anime on standby, the full version that was on the soundtrack CD. So you wanna be a master of Pokemon! That means it's in your blood. If he was just being a good dad, he'd have like the current opening theme for Horizons or maybe the original theme, but Orange Island theme, that means you know what's up. Though I will say it's kind of weird he says, so you want to be a master of Pokemon rather than the call and response like it is in the song. Unless <gasps> he's referencing the alteration in the movie version. So you want to be a master of Pokemon? That's real dedication. Although it could also mean this happened a few times. Oh yeah, come on, honey. So you want to be a master? So you wanna be a... So you wanna be a master of Pokemon? Do you have the Jeez, it's the honeymoon all over one? again. I absolutely adore Celestine's expression though. That is the most realistic, polite, cringe endurance face I've ever seen in animation. I also like how they eventually get into it too. Wow, Dad, this is actually a fun song. Hard to believe it came out over a decade before I was born, huh? Well, Ava, sometimes things just age pretty. <laughs> That's bad. Wait until you're dead. I remember Listomania, the movie and the phenomenon. Dad? Then they arrive at the city of generic location. Ava gets her first recognition in the wild. Ava, I'm your biggest fan. Oh, hi. Side note here, trust me, even with as few subscribers as I have, fingers crossed that ages poorly, when someone recognizes you in the wild, it is just as surreal on both sides. I'm sure once you get mega huge, it gets annoying, but at least at the beginning, it's like your brain has always compartmentalized your viewers as real, but not really real, you know? Chat interactions aside, they're just this faraway nebulous blob that remains impossible to comprehend until a real life interaction suddenly puts a face to the numbers and your brain just shifts gears without the clutch. So if you approach a YouTuber or any creator at a con or in the wild, if we act standoffish or stiff, more often than not, it's just us struggling to realize you're real, if that makes sense. But yeah, moment of vulnerability aside, then we get that staple of sports stories, the preppy nippos with the custom uniforms. Who's that? <gasps> That's Edgar Troy! Wow, he gets a last name? Not even the protagonist gets that. Actually, at first I thought they said Caster Troy, which, I mean, easy masterful if they went that direction. But no, it's your standard gatekeeper jerk team with a waspy leader. Though I do love the Jojo-esque posing. I keep forgetting my age as compared to the audience. Is wasp still a thing? White Anglo-Saxon Protestants? Preppy blonde Nepo babies? Well, we should bring it back if not, it's fun to say. But though Ava does well in another game we don't see, the rest of the team is wiped and the world is continuing to transition to Yu-Gi-Oh apparently as defeat shockwaves are beginning to appear. Yep, I got nothing. Ava totally dumped you. Again. Okay, you don't have to say it like that. Um, I definitely agree with Joshua here. Maybe I'm just too old to keep up. But I was always under the impression that dominated means to beat someone soundly in a game. Dommed means something else entirely. Oh, okay, but I've never heard that one either. I always thought it was dunked, but that's fine. When's my next therapy session again? <clears throat> but Ava's letting the pressure get to her, so the crew blow off some steam by doing their best Mario impressions. <laughs> 
Dang, that was a good shot. The subtle breeze was just enough to foreshadow while not holding so long that it felt patronizing. Foreshadow what? Like I need to even say it. Ow! My Dang, they even pulled out the freaking Lacrimosa from Requiem in D minor. That's going hard for our Pokemon show. They even went kinda sorta off model for Ava's ugly cry recovery face. Props for that too. Hey, grab your shoebox. I need to save this for a reaction clip too, it's really well delivered. So the crew are going to trade their cards to get Ava's deck back since it's still registered and they know what's in it. Don't sweat it! It'll be worth it when you win. That's heartwarming for sure, but it does kind of put even more pressure on her, especially when holy shinks, is that a base set Charizard number four? That's worth nearly $200 when I wrote this. Well, before I was nervous about facing those top level traders, but now that you've given up your own collections worth hundreds of dollars to allow me a shot, I think I'm about to have a stroke. No sweat, remember us in therapy. Also, apparently Ava has a freaking dark cry in her deck. Why haven't we seen that yet? But then we get the montage again. Come on, just, just a teeny little crummy crumb strategy. Don't make me beg here. Finally, it's time for the championship match versus Mr. Troy, and ah, oh, they gave him the calm nerd voice. Well done on making it to the finals. My analysis predicts your deck has a 72% fail rate. I wanted the preppy old money voice, dang it. Here I can go, mmm, it's cute you think that a commoner like you can beat a highborn like me. Would have upped the punchability by 20%, I promise. Then, could it be? <sighs> Hi, Scoop. It is! An actual play! He forfeits to give himself essentially a double mulligan and hopefully cause a false sense of confidence in his opponent, which pays off when he wins in the next round. Now come on, you just need one more thing to make it perfect. Uh, I guess it was too much to hope for. At least I got an effective psych out technique. I guess that's something. <gasps> Yes! Ava has to shuffle her whole hand into her deck! Yes! The Iono card dumps both your hands and makes you draw according to the number of prize cards. So if you're losing and have six prize cards while they have one, it's basically the perfect reversal and a real strategy kids can try at home. Halle friggin' Luya! Go get him, Ava! And she lost! What? Path to the Peak is evolving! That was devastating! This could go so many places, I just... Oh wait, hold on. Thoughts. Dang it, I knew they had it in them! I'm so proud! This one started out pretty standard, if kind of safe and mediocre, with a neat conflict that seemed a little contrived, but still gave us a nice bit of community warm fuzzies that effectively set up the stakes, only to crush them to pieces with an actual strat from the game! It seems like as soon as Lacrimosa kicked in, everything seemed to step up a little and provide a truly Pokemon-esque subversion at the end that kids can really sink their teeth into. What happens when the anime-style good deeds and support fail you? What happens when karma looks the other way? To paraphrase Misty, what happens when things don't just work out when you try hard enough? It happens. Sometimes your opponent wants it more than you do. You're the protagonist of your story, but not theirs. Someone has to fail, and it's not always through lack of trying. That was one of the things that made Ash such a compelling protagonist to me, at least in the tournament arcs. He could lose. He has lost, but winning wasn't what defined him. The drive to be better was. As the philosopher John Candy once mused, Gold medal is a wonderful thing, but if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. This is really important for kids and grown-ups to come to grips with. Nowadays you could replace gold medal with gold play button and it has the same effect. You need to be enough. And get paid a living wage no matter what your job is, union strong, etc. And that's why... I can't believe I'm giving this a master ball. Sure, there are flaws, and it still feels a little cynically schmaltzy in places, though not as much as before, but it tapped into what made Pokemon special to me in the first place, and showed kids and adults watching that, contrary to what your brain tries to convince you, you aren't special. You aren't inherently better than those around you. But you are still unique, you are still powerful, and most importantly, you still have worth. Be the best, like no one ever was, at being you and uplift others to do the same, even if it means some sacrifice on your part. Thanks for giving me that reminder, cartoon tried to sell me children's toys. 
Trivia. In the In Universe Media site, there's a suggested video showing Bidoof as a reference to the other short film made by the same studio that made this, Bidoof's Big Stand. Most people really dug it, and there's a lot of trademark charm, beauty, and comic timing there that we'd later see in this series, so check it out if you haven't already. Also, while looking up what on earth donk means, as I'd never heard it before and wondered if it was some new Gen Z thing, I found out apparently it's also a poker term for a player that makes basic mistakes, so it's either an attempt to write safe for broadcast tween slaying, or an actually quite clever reference. I guess I'll choose to believe the latter. Lastly, I have to mention this as it's anime related, but when Ava's dad and the others sing Pokemon World? We all live in Pokemon World. Pokemon. Well, they also do that in the Japanese dub of the show, but they don't do it to the Japanese second opening. They sing a translated version of Pokemon World. Pokemon one of the few times an English opening has technically been officially translated and dubbed into Japanese. Man, now I just need Rika Matsumoto to sing a version of the original dub theme and I'll die happy. I want to be the very best no one ever was. Well, guess I'll die. Oh wait, it's still in English. Ah, uh, she hasn't sung a Japanese version. I live. Who's that Patreon? It's Grim and the Fell Dragon. Dragon. They ask, what Pokemon spin-off would you like a continuation of, or what kind of spin-off would you like to see? This one used to be easy, but not so much now, because I always wanted to see a detective story set in the Pokemon world, but now I got it. Twice even. I definitely want either a remaster or a sequel to Pokemon Conquest, like I said earlier. If they did it in the new Triangle Strategy art style, that would be amazing. Also on a related note, Total War Pokemon. I think everyone wants an army of Bulbasaur fighting till the last faint. If they say they don't, they're lying. It's him and Val! They ask, what stories would you tell if you were in charge of the Pokemon anime after Ash's story in the main anime officially ended? This one also used to be easy, as I wanted to see what would happen if a Jenny went rogue, and that kind of happened, but I mean a full disillusioned Jenny storyline would be amazing if a little skewed older, and if we were going that far, I'd go for a Pokemon courtroom drama. No, but until they allow teen Pokemon media, that's not what I would personally pitch. I'd pitch a series set in a center following a joy from day to day, with slice of life warm fuzzies and fun cameos breaking up intense ER drama and character dynamics, plus an overarching conspiracy plot regarding illegal cloning etc. I think it'd be fun. It's, it's cold dirt! dirt. Ask, who's the best Team Rocket Pokemon? Not counting Meowth or Wobbuffet. Eh, despite a couple of issues, I'd probably go with Beware. I know they never caught it, but hey, they never caught Meowth either. It's still a little too convenient for making Team Rocket leave the story, but I can't deny there were some amazing gags and excellent animation that stemmed from the dynamic. Well, after all that, what more is there to say but... Worlds! Extra special thanks to Brandon K, Calvin Atkinson, John G. Robertson, Jonathan Johnson, Matt Stores, Maurice Spear, Mystic Samurai 1983, The Dark Master, Trey McGowan, Winters King, and Wolf Raptor.